Ladies and gentlemen, to the greatest podcast on earth! Step right up and experience the magnificence that is the Two Ring Circus Podcast! You'll gasp, you'll laugh, and you'll be amazed at what comes next. Amazing. Don't worry about the smell. It's just the stars of our show, Tom Italiano. Oh, hi. And Matt Bradshaw. Did you forget who was who? Welcome. <laughs> We've been together for so long now, we just meld into the same person in our uh, eyes. Uh, happy. Happy New Year! Happy New Year. Yeah. How's that? Amazing. Amazing. What are those things? I know, we made it. It takes a whole year. It is actually New Year's Day. In sunny Lara. It's beautiful. Solara. It's a beautiful day. It is a magnificent day. Yep. I rode here. On your push bike? Could you imagine? <laughs> I could. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I one of those out. blue bikes, those city bikes that you get in the city for half oh an hour. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, uh, not one of those, but I did ride an O-bike a little while ago. Oh. I found one unlocked on the side of the road. You just had a crack? Went for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Road from, uh, road from Kensington to the I, pub. I cannot believe how poorly thought out that business model is. I cannot believe it. They must have lost a fortune. What if it's just an insurance scam? Could be. What if they just had all the bikes insured anyone, for more do, than level? I wonder if... Um, people know any, what O-bikes yeah. are. Yeah. Should we tell them? Yeah, but surely they do. So, uh, uh, is it a business around the world or is it... Yeah. So uh, well, it started in Singapore, I believe. Right. And of course, it's Singapore, so it's beautifully organised and people, people are, are respectful. respectful. <laughs> you bring that kind of shit to Melbourne and look what happens. People are just like, oh, well, I don't have to drink drive anymore. I'll ride a bike. <laughs> That's what people do, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a it's a bike sharing yeah. facility. It doesn't have docking stations. So you can just pick one up from anywhere, leave one anywhere. Are they GPS enabled so you know where they are? So if you open up a, yes. the app on your phone, you're like, oh, there's one three streets away. Yeah, it's yeah. just lying on the side of the road. Well, I don't yeah. know if it's... Or lying in a ditch. Or in a river. Or hung on a fence. Yeah. <laughs> I got in touch I, some time ago, earlier, this, earlier last year. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, I posted a link. I found an article about a guy in Melbourne who just off his own back <coughs> had decided to start going and rescuing these O-bikes. So <laughs> Rescue? <just, laughs> Holy, uh, just chucking anchors into the Yarra and hauling out bikes, just rescued all these things. And I reposted his video and he got in touch with me. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Just great. Just, yeah, off, what a just having a crack. Yeah, that's, um, that's a it's, bit of a... Sathy. Because I was, yeah, really <coughs> so disappointed in... You know, I, I, I often have conversations with people where the person I'm talking to will say, fuck, people suck. And I'm like, well, no, people can. Not everyone does. And sometimes people do. Mm. But and sometimes people who don't usually suck suck for a little while. Yeah, I mean, and it's I'm the... Not, <laughs> it's it's not the, trying to be... <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude... But it's the yin and the yang of it. No one's all bad. No one's all good. And Yeah, I commonly say um, the best and worst thing about Earth is people. Because, mm. you know, I, but I believe I, that. <laughs> I was tremendously disappointed in people. So I'm the guy who says, well, no, people aren't bad all the time and you shouldn't just tar them all with the same brush. But then I see stuff like that and I think, fucking hell, people are dumb. And shitty. Mm. So I say that phrase and think, no, well, people just do shitty things sometimes. But <sighs> look, I'm, ju- I'm working through this. Uh, sorry. I'm, That's weird, isn't it? It's New Year's Day and I'm <sighs> keeping it in. Why? Well. You want me to work through it at my own pace? Well, no, just because I have a similar feeling about it, but you, you seem to be a lot more... <laughs> um, objective and charitable than I tend to be. Well, I try to be. Yeah. I, I do genuinely I mean, try I, to we've be. spoken about this before as well, about how we earn our money. You know, how we earn our living in front, uh, generally in front of people who, um, for the most part, are on their way. They're not just enjoying a quiet drink socially with friends. They're on their way to becoming a menace. Not like I am when I'm drunk, but... 
Um, I know some of them. Yeah, some of them, and or gambling, or you know, the, uh, just that that kind of thing where I, I often look out into the audience and think, three hours time. I hope you're not here anymore when I'm still playing. Yeah, yeah. Because you already. Have, do you have yeah. friends <clears throat> that come to your gigs that get like that? I thought they were. Gonna, you were going to. Do you have friends? Yeah. Comma. Come to your gigs that get like that. Uh, no. Right. No. Yeah, I do. Um, and they are the people that, if they weren't my mates, I'd, I'd want them gone. So as it is, I cut them that slack because mm. they're my mates, and also try to rein them in a bit. Yeah. And a mate of mine come to my gig on Thursday night, which was populated quite substantially by members of the Barmy Army. And this guy is just an instigator. He gets a few drinks under his belt. <laughs> and he's sitting at a table directly in front of me. And these guys are all sitting over here. And they're Barmy. big English yeah. dudes. And this guy, he's already had a skinful, walks in with a pint of Guinness sits down he doesn't walk in with a pint of Guinness <laughs> walks over from the bar with a pint of Guinness sits down and says right we're going to play some Australian songs because the English cricketers are so shit house <laughs> dude do you have to I think I know who that is <laughs> <laughs> you probably do and I cut him slack too because he's hilarious <laughs> he is but he's so obnoxious yeah he is he's a really obnoxious drunk I mean he's harmless yeah do you know that's interesting he is the sort of guy I cannot believe that someone hasn't punched his fucking head in yeah, but I, 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 because I know who he is, uh, who we're talking about, when you say he's harmless, you're absolutely right. He absolutely is. He's obnoxious, is. but he's not antagonistic in the sense of he doesn't... Like, I think it's quite obvious to everyone around him that he's just playing the smart ass. Okay. Um, well, that, yeah, right. Because even, like, when I've played and he's been in front I of me... I love that he's, we he's, know who yeah, we're talking about. And, like, he's yelling out, like, his, uh, you know, absurd requests, like, over and over, over again. Over and over again. It's just being silly. Yeah. Um, whereas <laughs> yeah, other people would, you know, they, they it's just they're drunk and stupid, being stupid. It's like, you know how I said I don't know that song, right? You shouting it at me for the next 40 minutes isn't going to make me learn it. I'm not a DJ. I can't fucking download it into my brain and play it. Yeah, you know it. I, uh, happened all um, Saturday night with me and Sam. Some kids like, Streets of New York. We're like, what is that? We don't know what it is. We don't... We, who sings it? He didn't know. Just knew the song title. I was like, well, shut up then. We're actually on the stage going, shut up. <laughs> he then got kicked out because he was an English kid who was really drunk. He's over yeah. from, from the cricket. And then And got by the way, out making it crap for everyone. And jumped over oh, the thing really? to try and get back in. And it got dragged out. So just clearly some people are stupid. And it wasn't me referencing the fact that he was, he was English. It was just... No. He was over for a good time. Clearly some people are English. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, not allowed to say from the British Isles when you're in an Irish pub, though. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not. I was surprised you did. Oh. <laughs> like I said, I've got a map. I know what they're called. <laughs> it was... Uh, it's called Islesland. <laughs> no, Christmas no. Eve, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Christmas Eve in an Irish pub with lots of Irish people. Which is... Uh, that's why I didn't do my my regular standard joke of playing 500 miles and then saying this is a song for all of my Irish friends because I thought they were they were just yeah. edgy enough, drunk enough yeah. to not get the no. gag. But that's so, you know, we're back to that point of this is what we do for a job and we play in front of people who are there, you know, having a good time. Um, but so often just that we're not having a good time anymore. Yeah, like you, you're actually being a jerk <laughs> yeah you do have to pick your audience yeah I can't <laughs> um, did we reference this we did partially the, the last time or the time before that we got together when I was talking about the guy who left me the tip and then took half of it back <laughs> to buy drinks yep <laughs> um, and then stole your drink <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> and his I don't know if he was his mate or not but anyway at the end of the night he said no you handled that really well it was fine, man. Mm. He said, no, nah, no, you just, like, you know, the cops call this fight night. Do they? Okay. It's like last tr tradies final blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't okay, know if they yeah. call it fight yeah. night or not. They're just to break up before Christmas. Kind that of sort of thing. Yeah. So it was <clears throat> enti almost entirely populated by tradies and all that sort of stuff and hangers on. Um, and I thought, you know, in the... 
20 years that I've been playing live. I, I reckon I can... Oh, I can't start counting. That's dumb. But I, I don't think I've ever had aggression directed towards me in a gig sense. No, but I've seen you a couple of times deflect it quite... Oh, not aggressively, but like kind of call someone on them being on them being a dick, like when you're playing, and then they're being a dick, you've called them on it, and then right. they've backed off. Yeah, but right. But they haven't, therefore... Yeah, okay. Like you. you know, they're clearly trying to push your button, like, you know, pushing the microphone and stuff like that, and you're like, oh, hey, you're man, right. you know. And then yeah, the amount of times you're like, I've clearly warned you enough. Because that's when you, when you use the phrase dickhead. Like, you get the... you like, you don't say dickhead. You say dickhead, come on. <laughs> You get all, you get all Jeff Benicky on them. Do I? <laughs> yeah, I've seen it a few times. I've, I very rarely have either. But I also, um, I've not been a, I've not really been a front man in a band at all, mm. and acoustic duo stuff, uh, I find. Yeah, it lends itself to not being like that. You're yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Plus, um, just the time. Like, if you're in an acoustic duo, you're probably not playing until 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, when, you know, that, it's like that magical witching hour of 1 till 2 where people are now way, way too drunk and they really should not be getting served anymore. Yeah. But they're still somehow... I've got three more pints and the reason they've got three more pints between 1 and 2 a.m. is because they keep putting them down and go, I need a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another one. Yeah, good point. Um, <clears throat> and that's when people get... That's when the fights happen. But I haven't seen... Having said that, I have the amount of trouble at gigs has just disappeared completely in the last 10 years I reckon like, uh, when I started to say I can count on yeah. oh well, that's just silly but I don't see 2000 2005 there was a fight every <coughs> year no, no matter what you know it was it was real trouble all the time and um, yeah much much less of it I always used to think when we were smoking in- I wonder I, I reckon there's I reckon that has whittled out a huge part of the demographic that goes out you mean smoking makes people aggressive? Uh, not smoking that makes people aggressive, but... Kidding. Um, Smokers are aggressive and now they don't go out anymore? Perhaps partially. Really? I think there's a small demographic that would be the, the drink and smoke and fight and crew. Yeah, but my mum used to smoke and she, she was pretty um, aggressive. My mum, she's terrible. <laughs> um, but if you, I wonder if it's that you want to go out for a smoke, you, most places you can't take a drink. Mm. So every eight minutes, but someone when someone's drunk, they want to go out for a smoke. They're not drinking anymore, so they're not. They don't do that. Okay, I want I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those people who say I only smoke when I drink. Yeah, and they can't they drink can't while drink they're smoking. They smoke. <laughs> but, that, but I was just saying, like, it's pretty good. Like, if I really think about it, it was really around the time when the smoking ban came in that re- I stopped seeing yeah, okay. brawls because people weren't permanently stuck in the room. With a drink in their hand all the time. I think that's... I, I certainly changing. used to think as well that... Um, <laughs> there isn't more security on. There's no. less security than there ever has been. No. And often and places don't have it. They have a bartender who's got a license. they very good. Well, they're very much... I think there's... Certainly when there's not a lot of security, they stay away as long as they possibly can because they know that they are outnumbered I think there's some places that you and I have played at over the last few years where they employ cheap security yeah that's... I don't just mean not many of them I mean the ones that are there are kind of cut rate yeah and they perform their job in a cut rate way mm. I think you're probably right yeah some of those venues aren't open anymore anyway um <laughs> I was going to say as well um I always used to think I, I do think about it now. I, I think it about the band now. Um, G-Force, when you and I were doing it together and all that sort of stuff. So oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to mention the war. Shut yeah. up. Um, it's out of my heart now. That the sort of music we played didn't lend itself to being uh, aggressive crowd No, friendly. we weren't a grungy band. A no. Rock, big rock band. And when we played rock, it was like the, the final countdown or something. Not yeah, like, and we had the other stuff under our belt. I mean, we certainly did do Killing in the Name of or... Into Sandman. But we didn't do it on nights where... We did it on the nights when some 22-year-old girl would request Mm. Into Sandman. Not 
five drunken idiots in the corner. And this is all this is all but, under the umbrella of pick your battles. Yeah, and that does also mean that if if your first two sets are you know upbeat, dancey, you know maybe light rock stuff, mm. that those guys who want to hear that are left by the time you play into Sandman. They're not the building. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to um, just double check that we're all in frame. Oh, all right. I mean, I'm oh, clearly because I've lent a long way out. Oh, that's I? good. Yeah, we're yeah. all good. Okay, actually. Let's continue this podcast from here. Uh, what, with just me in shock? Kind of like an interview. Let's not. <laughs> Let's not. Um, My voice is shot to pieces. I don't quite understand why. <laughs> you know what I did last night? <laughs> well, what did you do last night? Um... Because my like I've, we've done we've all done a lot of gigs the last few weeks and um, I'm tired really tired. Uh. Um, I got home and I massaged my throat with arnica cream for like 20 minutes like until my until my hand was like falling apart. And I woke up woken up this morning feeling quite mellow. <laughs> and I wonder if that's why I woke up at 7:30, like because I wasn't because I got I got rest. You know, like really? sometimes you know you don't you don't have a lot of sleep, but you wake up and go, I feel rested. Mm. I haven't slept enough, but I feel way better than than I would if I usually have eight hours. So, okay, magic cream, magic cream. Yep. Did you say Monica, like the honey? No, Annika. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. How do you pronounce Monica like the honey? Um, I don't think I've ever said it. Oh, Man- uh, Manuka. Manuka. Me too. Yeah, Manuka. Hmm. I would say that. I'd like to know why. I had to, I'd like to know what's correct. I, I've always said Manuka, but I thought you said Manuka, and I've heard no. someone else say that, and I thought... Well, well Anika is A-R-N-I-C-A. That's... The, yes. Yep. Um, what's that made of? Oh, I can't remember. Okay. But something. It's made of something. Yeah. yeah. I, I found, and I've been on the planet a little while, that most things are. Most things are made of things. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> Do you know it takes a whole year? To make a year. <laughs> uh, I did a private house party for New Year's Eve last night. Um, I didn't know you were a DJ. <laughs> he, in, uh, in Berwick. Berwick. Uh, my mother's maiden name. Berwick. Yeah. Oh, that means I have to change all my fucking passwords now. <laughs> uh, no, that's just the question. Yeah. If you yeah. forget. Yeah. Yeah. But still, now they're oh. halfway there. Don't tell me the Lucky next password real- your favourite song, Living on a Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite song? That's funny. Could you imagine what if was your my favourite song was... We just give everything away. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, big property in Berwick. I didn't know that Berwick had places like the one I played at oh, last was, night. Yeah, It was it kind was, of mansion-y. Yeah, right. It was only been built uh, 12 months ago. Um, oh, so new mansion-y. Cause new mansion. Obviously, that's finally yeah, in from new Eastman. mansion. Yeah. Right. So, I drove along. I got to the house number, and it was just a driveway through a through a not a field, a paddock, not a paddock, a, a field, Vast not a field, tract of a land. hillside. <laughs> well, it doesn't feel like a paddock when it's a lovely sweeping rise, meadow? a sweeping rise, meadow. All right, tundra. No, it was summer. <laughs> so, our shoulder driveway, it's it about half, half a kilometre long. There's a road tundra. <laughs> I'm halfway up and there's an old couple, there's a joining fence line, the two driveways are basically parallel to one another. Um, old couple dragging their bins down the, <laughs> the half a K. Yeah. Turns out that guy, who's in his 90s now, used to own all that land uh, right, yeah. and just subdivided and sold off bits. I don't know how big this place was, but the guy's actually the guy who's the guy who owns the place I played at last night actually has black faced sheep on the property and stuff like that. What are they called? Uh black faced sheep? The Marino? I don't I'm know. not sure. I, I thought know. you'd know being a farm boy. Nah. Okay. No. Uh. Um Mutton and Lamb is all I know. <clears throat> Mutton fresh and dressed fresh. up as so I <laughs> So, I'm inside. Uh, they're on the hillside overlooking Melbourne City. It's crazy. Just, just like 180 degrees of city lights. So... Did you see the fireworks? <laughs> it 
everywhere, dude. Every firework display that was... I didn't know that's what happened in Melbourne. I thought they just had... Like in Sydney, I thought they just had fireworks on the bridge. Well, they've done that in Melbourne to disperse the crowds. Because oh. otherwise everyone goes into the one place. Yeah, right. It's absolute insanity. So was it 22 locations or something yeah, I think I, I read know. this morning? I don't know, but I, I can't get my head around the expense... No, same can with, I. Same 14 with, tons of fireworks. Yeah, same with um, the like the amount of money they spend on like in the city on Christmas decorations and stuff like you know. Decor- and it's I just, fucking wild, isn't it? Just, I'd love to see. I'd I'd love to to see the the numbers of what they think the projected return and revenue is for doing something like that because I don't that's think that's not why they do it though, well I, I, I can't understand I mean, why how they can justify the expense otherwise it's like oh I, you know it's the, <clears> the same thing as going I think well, they justify it as like a lovely public service like here's a thing that we can get everyone involved sure in. I think everyone would be much happier to just reduce the cost of parking in the city you know what we won't have a, we won't, I think if they had a if there was a spend, referendum yes don't yeah. spend 45 million dollars on fireworks or whatever it is it's probably something well maybe not that much but you know 10 don't spend that and spend it on this mm. spend it on homeless shelters spend it on feeding so that people was spending on you know just it's first just thing I thought of when you said about the Christmas decorations thing and then you've got just you know people sleeping rough under the fucking trees that have got lovely red sashes on them gives me the shits yeah absolutely it bothers me uh, like when we're in Rome and we're in the shadow of the Vatican and there's people sleeping on fucking bits of cardboard. What the fuck's going on yeah. here? There's like l- literally thousands of priceless bits of historical artwork. <laughs> and the Pope and blessing everyone. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Well, that's got to be worth something. Sorry, everyone. It's okay. It's New Year's Day. Just... Nothing changes on New Year's Day. I should have done that last night yeah. at midnight while everyone's watching the fireworks. I do this plaintive rock ballad um i'm gonna come back to i'm just writing down yeah fireworks cost because i want to we want to find that out yeah yeah i i get we're gonna have to start getting someone to come in and write stuff on a on a whiteboard while we talk so we can come back to it afterwards do you ever see Bedeal and skinner unplanned david oh. Bedeal and frank skinner uh it's so that was american rosso's terrible 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 knockoff um uh, they knocked off skinner <laughs> skinner yeah you know, you've just got these two charming, erudite English people doing beautifully funny, clever, off the cuff, quick witted comedy, and then you've got American Rosso. So, um, so there's fireworks going off all over the city skyline. Uh, there's a guy standing next to me. I said, you know what? Except for all the colours, this is what the apocalypse is going to look like. <laughs> No, it'll look it way was... better. The apocalypse <laughs> will be something to behold. But it was like it was like watching a movie where you, you where you like. as the protagonist are somehow you've managed to get away from the alien attack. <laughs> it's fucking it's crazy. Like the end of Fight Club where all the towers come exactly. down and they're yes. standing there. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Only I was some distance away, so I wasn't <laughs> even going to be affected by it. It's exactly what it was yeah. like. It was kind of funny, but actually a bit kind of oh, that's a bit creepy and weird. I love. I do, I do love that. There's things where people will congregate and they go and it's something quite special to go and and be together in the city at the same at the same time. Mm. But it's like, I think you could, it's New Year's Eve. If you're going to make a big deal out of, out of a new year, mm. like then you don't need all the shit. Just have some cool things happening in public spaces, some concerts or or whatever. Mm. But the it's just the money. Yeah, yeah. I know fireworks are beautiful. There, I, I, they are. I'm not saying that you know, you know, it's a big deal about nothing. But the expense, if you want to do things for the community, you can spend that money better. I, I agree with that. And the other thing <coughs> is, of course, no argument from where are they getting the money from? They're really just literally robbing Peter to pay Paul because mm-hmm. they're getting it from parking fines. They're getting it from like all that thing where they're aggressively out trying to raise me- revenue, and, they say, and then they say, "Oh, we spend this to make Melbourne yeah, yeah, yeah. a nice place to be," like. Yeah, good point. And I'm not saying that people should be allowed to park infinitely in the city without, you know, repercussions. Because obviously, you know, you need to move your car on so other people can share that space. But. I, I don't agree. I don't know. 
I think I leave your car there. If you're going to pay, leave your fucking car there. Anyway. Because mm. not that... Me- mm. <laughs> That's boring. Boring, boring, boring. Start I, talking it, about parking I would again. say, I would if say, I'm, just bring in a, like a London, like city driving tax. No. Yeah. I have to drive there. It's okay. It's not okay. It already costs me so much to drive on the freeway every day. And I have to. Mm, I swear my... And so it's the, we is. decided to buy like cheap houses like far away from the city and ended up probably spending the same amount of money as if we just bought an expensive one in the no, city. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. That's not true. That's not no, true. it's not true. Yeah. I don't believe it. Hey, um, if anyone's watching this right now, you'll notice I'm wearing a kind of pink slash red T-shirt. You actually look like you're about to head upstream to spawn. I'm Samony, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't be spawning though. Hmm? I'm a boy. Don't do eggs. I mean, it's all pink in the dark. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, the reason I'm wearing this is ah. because this is the gift I got from my brother for Christmas. I got two coloured T-shirts and he made me a magnetic poem. <laughs> Would you like to read it? I'm going to. Yeah. Colour is the thing that I lack as the T-shirts I wear are mostly black. <laughs> Your brother. Yep. That's good. <laughs> so I didn't have a gig... The Thursday before Christmas, um, and excuse me, um, I was going to meet a friend in the city, and I was cooked. Like, and so I came home, I came back, and he was in the he was in my house. I was like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" And my brother cannot lie, cannot, and he's like, "Ah, oh, oh, you busted me! <laughs> you busted me! I'm making you a present." He's like, "I'm sure. I was sure Thursday night you'd be at a gig." You'd be out. That's and so funny. I thought, because you know, all my family got keys to the house. Um, and that was, so the magnetic poem I did that night was, some people hate surprises, I'm not one of them. Because I just loved it. I loved that he he thought to do that, given that's what I've, I've been doing, that silly project for a year. <laughs> that's great. But it's very cute. Is it a year? Is it a whole year? Yeah. It's slightly more than a year. But yeah, right. I did, I've, I've done, did it for the whole of 2017. Amazing. Yeah. I'm going to continue. Of course you are. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? You're not out of ideas. You've got more shit to say. I don't. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I'm just going to say the same things again. See if people notice. Uh-oh. 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 That's not good. No, I'm not. Um... Yes. So, moving forward with this year. Yes. Uh, we definitely need to get some guests on. Yes. Um, I've like? got... <laughs> no, I hope not. I did leave my keys in it. Oh. To tell your bike. Nah, yeah. mine's mine's a little older than that. Um, I got all my points back. I've got eleven months to go. Driver's license. Oh, oh, you on a one pointer? Y- yeah. Oh, did I know that? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, we've discussed it before on the solar. But you're on a one pointer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's why I had a big rant and rave over the fact that yeah. you should uh, get more. Yeah, you yeah, should be allowed course. more points because we drive more than I most do, people. Uh, yeah. Again, you will get no argument from me. I don't know. Well, no, I got an argument from someone last night when I, we were talking about it. She said, well, how, I drive about 50,000 k's a year and I haven't lost that many points. Did you tell her she drives like a girl? <laughs> she, well, she was a girl. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Did you give her your T-shirt to wear and tell her she should head upstream? <laughs> no. Well, like that's a really nice way of telling someone to fuck off. <laughs> Go spawn upstream. Um, <laughs> huh. Who were you? Uh, who were you supposed to meet on last Thursday when you were crook? Uh, Lita. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know what you're about to say. I'm not going to say. It. <laughs> what did you got to say? 2017 wrap up. A wrap up. I made some notes. You did. Good Remember man. we were going to talk about it? Yeah. 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 I didn't make notes, so I'll just riff with you. Okay. Yeah. I need to make notes because I forgot what I saw. All right. Mm. What do we got? Wrap, wrap it up. What's your favourite movie? Um, I think it's still gifted. Okay. Yeah, even a week later. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. Okay. It's lovely. Really nice film. I was tempted to say, not favourite, but certainly it was the one that sprang straight into mind, um, the, disa- the, <clears throat> the Disaster Artist. Yeah. And then I put that aside because I thought, I've just seen that. It's like fresh. Yeah. It's like when, it's like when they do the Triple J Hottest 100. 
and in the top 10 there's like songs that just happen to have come out in the last two oh, weeks because yeah, they're sure. the ones that people remember the most fair enough yeah um, I thought you were about to say it's like when, you've, when you're eating pizza and this is the best pizza I've ever had like every pizza is the best pizza you've ever had pizza's pretty good yeah, isn't it? yeah. it's got all the you got it's everything got the you need. Bread and it. It's got all the sauce and obviously it's the got bread salty in it. and yeah. Huh? It's got bread in it. Yeah. Well, that, I should have stopped there. <laughs> it's only anything else. Um, the nice guys. That was this yeah. year, wasn't it? Uh, no, I don't think it was. I think it was like I think, I think it, it was. was. Okay. But that is a remarkably good film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which really flew under the radar. I don't um, think many people know about it. Arrival was one as well, but I think that was the year before as well. Ah. Uh, Blade Runner You're right, was, Nice Guys 2016. Blade Runner was great. I was really, uh, there, I was hesitant about um, Blade Runner for two reasons. One, that I saw a trailer and thought Terrible it didn't trailer. look very good yeah. at all. And second, that I hadn't seen the other 2047 films between Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. I just thought, might be... <laughs> Like lose the thread of um, I think I feel <laughs> um, I think I f- feel like I liked Blade Runner more than I did because I just saw Star Wars and I thought I, if you compare if you compare this is a uh oh a f- like a um, not so much a franchise Star Wars is a franchise but it's, it's a, a sequel and what they did with it and just the story and how beautifully it was shot and yeah just I thought it was very very good just, so good yeah it was a great, but like I said, he's the guy that did Arrival. Yeah, you know, it's just I, I was watching it. I didn't know that he directed it, and I was watching it, going, "I reckon this is the same director," because it just had, just had that kind of vibe. Enemy, there. was that his as well? Yeah, oh, phenomenal film. Mm. Okay, um, the year before, the, another one that is now like you know a video shoppy kind of one is um, Demolition. You just said the enemy, Jake Gyllenhaal, Demolition. Yeah, Demolition's fantastic. Yeah, I, I can watch. That's a good little hunting type film for me. I could watch that once a month, happily. That the vending machine one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super film. In fact, I think yeah. you recommended that yeah. to me. Yeah, if, really. If good. memory serves, which it usually doesn't. Baby Driver, great film. Logan Lucky, did you see that? I haven't seen it. No, it's good. I saw the trailer while I was uh, projecting Dunkirk. Um, um, I never saw Dunkirk. I didn't get there. I didn't see it properly. Huh? You didn't? I just projected it for three weeks, oh, so yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't actually watch it. Didn't see La La Land, either uh, at the cinema when you told me to, nor indeed since then. Um, I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's great, and a lot do. of people who, a lot of reasons why people have said they disliked it, I think they wanted it to be something that it wasn't. Right, you know, like it's like they really should, if they're going to do musicals, they really should get you know singers Proper to singers, do. Blah, it's blah, like blah. yeah, but they don't play singers. Like one's a piano player and one's an actress. She's not. They're not. So like, why would you get? Yeah. I mean, if they're meant to be singers, or if they're just meant to be show people, then sure. But or if it's no or people if not, like show people. No, it's true. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Continue. I keep wanting to touch your uh, Patty knees. Patty knees. Yeah, because no, he's not Irish. No. Um, <laughs> Because you rode your bicycle. Um, I did ride my bicycle. <laughs> you, brought, you, you brought your knee pads. Is that because you take corners wildly? No. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's really interesting about riding a motorbike and getting ready to go for a ride. This part of me... I love, I love riding a bike, and I've only been doing it for three years. Always wanted one. Yeah. Always, always wanted one. Ever since I was a kid, we might have said this. When I was a little kid... And people would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I I used to say I wanted to be a dentist on a motorbike. Oh, that's adorable. Um, I have no idea why. I'd never been on a motorbike, so... That's like the making of a comic strip superhero. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) So I had never ridden one. Maybe rode my mate's Pee Wee 50 when I was 11. Yeah. Yeah, 10, 11 years old. Even then, I'm not sure that I because I might not have been allowed to or I might have been frightened that if I did my parents would kill me <laughs> which they would if they found out now that I'm riding a bike ah they listen to the podcast they do not listen to the podcast well I can't say bicycle they are anyway. not on Facebook yeah that's right yeah um, so we, uh, we do however bicycle. my parents and I have some mutual friends on Facebook and I 
noticed I, I went out yesterday for a ride because I had an unexpected afternoon off. I had a gig that got blown out about 10 days out from the gig. Um, and so I, and it was a beautiful day yesterday. So I took the opportunity to ride into, I went to Red Hill. Oh, great. Yeah, great. So I put probably 80, 90 Ks on the bike yesterday. Strawberries? No, I didn't. I uh, went to Red Hill Brewery oh. and had um, chili beans mm. and uh, mac and cheese. Yeah, it's great. Out. End of, end of the year in style, Bradshaw. I did. I walked up to the counter and she said, oh, just to let you know, we sold out of lots of stuff. And she showed me the menu. She's just like a little snacky menu. So they've got the brewery part. And then around the corner, they've got like a uh, subcontractor, like a third party, yeah, different yeah. group yeah. that just uses the premises and does it. So there's only probably mm, 10 things on the menu. And all the meat stuff was sold out. And there was Perfect. just, yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, oh, I'm a stupid vegetarian. I just want those two. Another Is that too much? Is another too, too film much? for the list. Great together. I'll go on. Hell or High Water. Really? You seen that? No, don't know about it. Um, Jeff, I'll write it down. Jeff Bridges. I love him. Chris Pine. And the guy who I could never remember his name, and he's always this amazing character and everything, but he's never the lead. Harry Dean Stanton. No. Um, anyway... Uh, about two brothers. Right, though. About two brothers of Rob Banks. I don't mean that it's Harry Dean Stanton, just um, that he's excellent. The two brothers of Rob Banks and um, Jeff Bridges is the sheriff. But it's this, it has the single greatest cafe scene I've ever seen in a film. Really? Yeah. Better than well, Pulp Fiction? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shorter as well. But you know, when I say. All right, honey. It's, um, they go into this place and they're trying to order and the, the waitress is, you know, old battle axe. And it's just the way she says, this is what you can have. You're like. I won't ruin it. It's okay. It's an incredibly good film. All right. I just put it on my list. Scene, it, that scene in itself, just like I was watching it going, this has been really good and worth it just for that. Yeah, right. Yeah, really funny. Okay, good. Um, so I posted some pictures on Facebook and then I noticed that one of my parents and my mutual friends had. So I sent her, I woke up this morning and thought, oh, Don't fuck. tell mum. Yeah. Did exactly. you send a message? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a. It's got to be a secret because what are my parents going to do from eight hundred kilometres away? They're just going to fucking worry all the time. And what's Why? the point of that? Why are they going to do that? And my dad would probably disown me. Be furious if he found out I had a motorbike. So, your parents? <sighs> yes. See, when did you move out of home? How old are you? No, twenty. So you're twenty. So, your parents. Have a thirty-seven-year-old son, yeah, right, who doesn't live at home anymore, yeah, and they would, and they live in a different state, yeah, and you think they would disown you for owning a motorbike, yeah, my my father definitely, wow, yeah, mum, see, I'm such a jerk, I would test the waters, yeah, I don't like have if, that relationship with my parents. Well, I well, you're not a jerk either, but if my if if my, I thought my dad would disown me for anything, I would do it. Well, you wouldn't, because you haven't got any piercings. No, well, no, but that's he's never threatened to disown me. <laughs> he just threatened to do one for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just. But uh, but in this scenario, has your dad said, just so you know, more or less, dead set. No, he said things like, "I will disown you." I think people who ride motorbikes are bloody idiots. Why would you put yourself in so much danger? Absolutely true. Completely logical thing to say. Mm. Yeah. Incredibly dangerous. My mum's dad doesn't mean used he would to ride dis- a Harley Davidson. Doesn't mean he would disown you. Yeah. I mean, you can have a valid point and still like And they the would worry. They would just worry. What's the point? What's the... There's, there's no upside to it. There's no upside to it. Sure. Okay. They're 900 kilometres away. Worried about any time there's a bit of nice weather or whatever. Fucking whatever. There's lots of stuff I, I just don't share with my parents because they would be concerned about me. But your parents would be, I mean, parents, I mean, I'm not. Like when I was in hospital, I didn't tell them until after I was cured that I was sick. Oh, that's no good, man. Dude, what's the point? The point is that what if you didn't get sick? What if you didn't get better? And what if if one day, what if one day you go out for a ride and you get killed on a bike Mm. and then they're still alive and they're going, oh my God, he had a bike, he didn't even tell us. 
Which, of course, you can't worry about because if you're dead, you can't worry about it anyway. But like that's the. But then it's the that's just the moment they were. Oh, he didn't even tell us. Mm. We're distraught that he's gone, but we didn't have to worry for. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't think that's how people work. I think people would be like, the little fucking shit didn't tell us. He could have told us, and then we could have worried. <laughs> I don't think I. I I don't know about that. I think I think I, my mum says this is what my mum says. I'm your mother. It's my job to worry, which I disagree with. But if she thinks it's her job, it's her job. So, like, it's like it's uh, not my opinion about what she thinks her job is is irrelevant in her world. Like, you know. So yeah. I feel like for me, and I, that makes sense. I'm not a parent. I don't understand, but I can empathise. If I had a kid, I'd be kind of concerned about their welfare all the time. Uh. So. I kind of figure if they think that that's their job, I should just tell them everything that I do. So, because I would rather them be worried because cause they already think that's their job to be worried than be angry if something happened to me and they didn't know about it. To, they would feel deprived of knowing about the thing that they wanted to worry about. <sighs> that's my parents. I'm not saying that's yours. And I, I, I'm not arguing with you in this sense of, I think you should do something different. Like, man, it's totally your perspective. But I'm just saying, like, I, I hate lie down that the middle. It, I, yeah, this yeah, is I what I do, and that's what you do. I, I hate that it it suggests a, a, a lack of open relationship between my parents and I, like, and oh. everything that that's that stands for. I don't, I don't like that. I'm not. No, no, I know you're not. You're, I don't like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I yeah. feel like what you're saying is why, like, I I think I know these people well enough to think that they would be. Concern, mm. concerned unnecessarily mm. but it is that thing of if they feel like that's their thing look as parents often do you know like my my thing is I want to worry about my kid like that I want to know that if they're going to do something dangerous I would rather know about it than one day wake up and feel like they couldn't tell me they were doing something dangerous it's been a recurring theme in my interpersonal relationships my entire life that I tend to have the conversation with myself before I have it with the other person. Oh, yeah, of course. Makes but sense. also make a decision about how they're going to react Yeah, and adjust my behaviour accordingly without actually having the conversation with them. I know how unfair that is. I know how kind of... Pa- I've often described it as patronising because um, I don't actually give the other person the opportunity to have their own reaction to it. I've already decided in my own head and heart what they're going to do. But that's also I've done it forever. A protective I still do it. mechanism for yourself. That's your self-preservation e- technique too. Yeah, it is. That makes it sound really quite selfish. I don't think that was your intention. No, I don't know. Self-preservation is not not selfish. It's, you don't think? No. Oh, no. Okay. What well, I mean, I mean, I'm, t- I'm yeah, I'm not saying yeah. It's certainly not a selfish thing. It's like in order for you to f- to feel. If you think that what you're doing is going to bother someone, you would rather them not know about it because you don't want to bother them. Mm. You don't want to upset them. Mm. That's not that's not selfish. Okay. But what that also does is it means that you therefore don't have to deal with the idea that you're aware of someone feeling upset about something mm. or worried or yeah, yeah, concerned. Yeah. So that protect you protecting yourself because now you're like, well, if what they don't know won't hurt them, and if they don't know, I can't be, I can't feel bad about them hurting. Mm. Makes sense. Mm. And it's not bad. No, no. It's common. Yeah. Yeah. How do you call me common? <laughs> American Honey. Did you see that? No, is it Shia LaBeouf? Yes. I love him. He's, He's good. A fucking incredible. He's a incredible guy. very, very talented. Weird. Actor. And I love him. Yeah, he's definitely an oddball. Yeah. Um,. Andrea Arnold, female director, also directed Big Little Lies, TV okay. yeah, miniseries thing. Yeah, which apparently is that's phenomenal. Yeah. Fucking great. Mm. She's really good. And she's only kind of new. She's done some TV stuff, like episodes of series, anthology stuff, but she's good. Yeah. That was my other one. Cool. Oh, and Jasper Jones, Aussie I film. I didn't see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, also female director. I can't remember her name. Rachel, 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 Rachel. Perkins. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I've got a disappointing one. 
Oh, so have I. It's not a film, though. It's a documentary. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It's just the videos on my phone. Oh, I didn't write it down. So there you go. So, oh, because oh, I'm a positive focus guy. Well, you don't want me to worry about the film you didn't like. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. What do you got? Oh, I don't think I do. Oh. No, I meant... I was just joking. Like... <laughs> it's obviously. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I've got this thing when I'm on the bike, when I'm getting ready to go for a ride, yeah. that, like, if I didn't have to wear a helmet, if I didn't have to wear a helmet, I wouldn't. Because uh-huh. I love it. I lo- like, it, you know, no jacket, no... Hel- like, just... Because the reason... The reason I love the bike is you're kind of in the elements. I don't mean at the mercy of fucking pa- passing traffic or anything. Like, riding out in Red Hill yesterday was beautiful. There was hardly anyone around. Windy roads and... It's just great. I had a helmet on. Um, but I love it. Like, you just... You're completely immersed, except for this big black thing on your head. You're completely immersed in you're everything immersed that's in going on. Black thing. Yeah. So, all the smell, like the diesel fumes and the buddy cow pats as you're riding past the thing and roadkill like you smell roadkill as yeah, you ride cows, yeah. it's crazy yeah. I love it yeah. I love it all you're just so you really accept that you've got this thing on you've got this big armour plated jacket on and so when I do big rides I actually wear like these Kevlar jeans yeah. and stuff Kevlar they're not just yeah. like they're because I can't in case I don't. you get shot because I don't because I don't wear leather you a jerk on obviously. a bike and make a lot of noise in the serene country I don't make a lot of so. noise no no <laughs> I actually haven't got a really noisy bike Good boy. um I'd love a big noisy bike. Yeah. I'd love a big noisy car. But then when other people drive them, I think, you fucking obnoxious dick. Uh, Go away and don't do that around me. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Mm. But I put on all this gear <laughs> and I feel like... I feel like I'm setting myself up for an accident. Uh, there's a little bit of that about it. Yeah. So I feel like I'm... Uh, tempting fate isn't the phrase I'm looking for. I can't think of the the, the correct. Well, it's manifesting, apt. isn't it? Right. <laughs> Just going to wear all this protective gear so that if I mean when, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where I feel like, because I don't actually think anything bad is ever going to happen to me. Yeah. Motorbikes probably don't count. Like I don't think I'm ever going to get any terrible diseases or anything like that. Aside from the one I've had, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I got better. Yeah. 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 My parents arrived from Adelaide the day I was... In fact, I was getting discharged when they turned up to the hos- at the hospital. <laughs> and you I was, me up from the hospital? And oh, I was that? arguing I was... with the staff. I've got to go. I've got to cook for mum. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I accidentally signed myself out. How does it accidentally... I signed the wrong piece of paper. Oh, good. And so they discharged me. Against doctor's orders. That was how I... Did you know that? That was how I eventually got out of hospital. No. Yeah. I believe anyway. Um, I'm dying up here. I think I mentioned that before. Um, uh, yes, Jim Carrey yeah. produced show about the comedy scene in yep. New York in the 70s. Yes. Fucking great. Cool. I haven't seen that. Penny Dreadful. How, how do I watch that? You can watch that on Stan. Okay. As I think you can Penny Dreadful, which it's is... Phenomenal. Have you yeah. seen it? I've seen five or six episodes. So, two, oh, you've seen more than me. Two years ago when um, I was living with my... Oh, three, oh, three and a half years ago I was living with my sister and Kit. Um, it just just came out. Yes, and I was going to say, I'm aware that it's not 2017, but it was for me. Phenomenal. <laughs> well, I watched um, uh, a few things this year like that, uh, Taboo. Um, Which I th- think I heard about but haven't seen. Yep. Very good. Really? Um, yeah, very, very good. Dark, um, incredibly stylized, arty, not mainstream, but very good. Great. Um to do uh, Ozark, which is on Fox Tower. Yes, or I've not seen same kind of thing. Uh, no, well, completely different, but like um, kind of unlike Taboo, which looks like it had an incredible budget. This Ozark looks like it was like a Netflix thing that could be super cheap, like but just done yeah, right. in a way that makes it you know look classy. Great script, incredible acting, um, and the one about the FBI. Serial killers. Um, anyway, that one was good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't watch a lot of new stuff. I I didn't feel when I sat down and tried to think about what I'd done, sort of pop culture wise this year. I couldn't couldn't pinpoint a whole bunch of stuff. But I do tend to watch 
TV series more than I do movies, which is weird. I can sit down and watch two episodes of something rather than one movie and feel like my brain in, engages because uh-huh. I'm only engaged for 45 minutes instead of well, I was just two saying, hours. Like, I, I often watch a movie from at home. If, if I don't go to the cinema, if I'm at home, I don't watch a full movie. Yeah. Like I watch it over three or four days or like over a week, you know, in three or four sittings. I woke up this morning wide awake at about 10 past six and watched, uh, watched a horror movie and then went back to sleep. Fuck. What? How can you watch horror movies? It's the reason why I haven't seen more of Penny Dreadful, because it was terrifying. <laughs> it is ter- it's terrifying. It's graphic and gory. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. She's amazing in that. Um, but Mr. Robot, which I don't think you've seen. I have, yeah. Oh. I've seen the first two seasons, though. So good. Yeah. Really <sighs> good. And Better Call Saul. Never seen it. No, because yeah. you haven't seen Breaking Bad. No. So it's yeah. the prequel to that. All right. Fuck, it's good. Yeah, okay. It's so good. It's a real slow burn. I still it's haven't seen uh, more impeccably than written and seven minutes of Game of Thrones. No, no, and I never will. No, they don't deserve us. I agree. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, didn't read any books. What, mate? Well, you're at the Lara Library now. You can borrow whatever you want. Um, you've got a membership. That's weird. I used to read heaps and not watch much TV, oh, and it's well, definitely changed. I definitely yeah. watch more TV now than more I ever have before. Uh, you become. You become an, a normal member of society where you spend most of your waking hours at work or working. And so when you unplug, you... Totally it. Go for... I know I've said to TV. you before, I, I watch TV on my phone. Oh, that's not good. In bed. Don't do that. Just propped up against the other pillow. No, no, and I'll be awake for a, maybe seconds. three or four minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm out. Yeah. So, you know... Um, uh, Turn one of your rooms in your house into a, a reading room. No. Nah. Well, it's just a place you go to read. Yeah, I've, I've kind of got one of those rooms. Oh. Yeah, no. Oh. I don't know, yeah. Um, Little Fires Everywhere, though, was a novel I read, which was spectacularly good. Did you read a book this year? Yeah, I did. Oh. <laughs> oh, did I say I didn't read any books? I think so. No, I did. I didn't... I, didn't no, read no. a book? Oh, no. I actually, no, I read a lot, but... but um, I only read, actually read heaps. I, no, I did read heaps, but I actually only read one new, new. Yeah. No, even that's not true. I probably only read one book that came out this year, which was this one, Little Fires oh. Everywhere. I picked up a book about four months ago. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, it was heavy. Mm. Um, it's called 365, mm. and there's a guy who wrote a short story every day for a year. Okay. And the only stipulation is that each story had to be exactly 365 words. Oh, for fuck. Fucking awesome. It's really good. There's this one, <sighs> one thing where he writes this story about People this. Are mad. He writes an obituary. And then um, the next story right, is the exact same story, but every um, noun is... That's not my bike. Every noun is replaced with the next subsequent noun from the dictionary. So, like, if it was John the Aardvark, John the Aardvark, it would be... Um, oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Johan. <laughs> the... Anteater. So, well, no, it would be a noun of something, so it would be just something else, it. like the arm, armadillo, at least, like, whatever. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Really, really. So then you're reading. It's and then that they're right on the next Antony page. comes before Armadillo. I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> um, so it's nonsensical, but brill- it's just brilliant. Yeah. So it was. It's been really good. I haven't. I haven't read the whole thing, but it's really cool. It's taken my magnetic poem thing and just gone crazy. Yeah. All right. Gifted like he's a a writer. Like, but it was yeah. a, a, an extra kind of project. He did really good. Okay. Good. Um, a book of poetry came out this year that I was not interested in, but I was interested in the fact that it came out called Now We Are 600, hmm. which is the poems of A.A. Mil- or, or, or poetry written in the style of A.A. A. Milne, but all about Doctor Who. Wow. Because, <laughs> cool. you know, Now We Are yeah. Six, the A.A. A. Milne. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so geeky. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I love stuff like that. I don't know how long we've been talking. Should we go yeah. away? Yeah. 
Okay. No, no, we've got, have you got other things? We'll, we'll do a wrap, 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 wrap up. Um, That's about it. All we do is just work and watch movies and TV. Uh, a little bit of music. Yeah, we played some music. No, as in Fleet Foxes. New Fleet Foxes album's really good. Yeah, that is pretty good. The new album by The National. Do you like them? The good, like, uh, you know, I, I do that thing with them and go, this is very good. Well, I can't connect with it. Okay. Yeah. I just find, I, like, I'm 100% about, about a lyric. Yeah, okay. Like, and so I like sounds and I like when people have got great voices and that kind of stuff, but you just so often I go, I've heard this lyric a million fucking times. Mm. Or this, I don't understand what it's about. This is like arty poetry and I, I can't, it's not connecting with, I can't connect with it. It's why I like, it's why I like Paul Simon and Billy Joel and Doors where I just go, this is artful use of common language. Yeah, of course it is. Not, it's, like, it's not like storytelling, but so emotive and yeah, and it's like I don't have to like full of imagery, but not <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and I'm not and when it's when it's dark or it's sad, um, it's specific. Mm. So yeah, yeah, okay. So you kind of go we're not you know it's, yeah, like I, I don't know. So. Oftentimes I will, I will, which is what I love about Spotify, and I just have the thing playing. I'm like, this sounds great. This is this is a beautiful piece of music. Guy's got a great voice, and like so much, so often with like modern country music as well. Like, I listen and just go, can you just write something that's past ten year old lyrics? You know, if it for me, if it sounds like it was written, it could be handed in for a primary school English yeah. competition. It's I could just. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. Just like it just doesn't connect. I'm just like I'm, I'm forty. You're like I'm mm. not. You know, it's not the first time I've heard anyone say. You know, I saw it in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not saying that. I'm just, what I'm saying is, you can say you can a songwriter can say I saw it in your eyes without using those words. Sure. And when they do, I go, that's cool. That's someone who cares about. The thing that is trying to, they try and connect with a, a common experience, but with a way of saying it which they've considered as opposed to go, oh, this is the first, first thing I've written. Yeah, do- what, yeah, doors have got that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I and I would imagine quite. I mean, I I don't know. I haven't seen many interviews with with Taylor Goldsmith, but I'd imagine that he just writes first drafts like that. Yeah, because that's how he writes. But um, I would also imagine maybe there's. 20 verses and then from the 20 verses he picks the right bits Um, you're a first draft kind of guy though aren't you no really yeah not at all really not at all yeah I am but my songs are much simpler than yours (laughs) I disagree my mine have well my are harmonically much simpler than yours I'm just a wonderful five writer you no I think lyrically though as well I write lyrics. <laughs> I remember, remember there was a time I used to write lyrics. I've certainly written lyrics that I think that's really clever. <laughs> like that's. I haven't clever. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck you! Just no. you've got some beautiful. But that's but that's my your songs that's that make me cry. What I try to do joke. is not write. I don't try to to write clever stuff or anything like that. I try. Yeah, I, do. I try to write <laughs> simple imagery. And I mean simple, so that when you listen to it, you're not going, you're not stuck on whatever that said while the next lyric is going. You just kind of go, oh, that's nice. Yeah, cool. I get that. But, um, but you know, in a different way. So often my first draft of something is the simple thing, and then I go back in and rewrite. Huh. And I, because I use a rhyming dictionary, that often changes what the second line's going to yeah, be yeah, or yeah. the third line. I find that really helpful for getting out of the humdrum. Oh, the, the rut of rhyming, mm. you know, she and me, you know, whatever. Hmm. So, I, I, yeah, I guess my wrap-up is I funded an EP for release and I didn't think anyone would be into it and they have been. Right. And you know what? It's been the best part of it and it's, it continues to happen because people keep putting on the CD for the first time, like I, since they're getting it, is they're sending me videos of their kids in the car. <sighs> like singing along or like That's you know falling asleep to it like just oh this is the city we put on when so and so it's 
That has been absolutely amazing. That's great. And not just one or two. Like It is very good. About do, like a dozen people. It is very enjoyable. That's nice. Thanks. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um, was it September 2016 that I came down and saw you do a gig? October, yeah. October, was it? Well, it was the first weekend, like second or something of October. At? St Kilda. Yeah. With Simon and Simon. Um. Not the publishers. I walked out of that gig because it was awful. I walked out of that <laughs> gig um, with every intention of having written and recorded at least half a dozen songs by the time April rolled around. Yeah. Did nothing. Hard to do. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Do you know what you, what you have to do? Well. No, no, go on. Tell me what I have to do. Tell me what you have to do. Um, this is why I got someone to produce it because I have everything here I could record it myself mm. and I, I just knew that I would I would never get it done because it would never be I never feel I never feel right yeah yeah you know, it's I always never, that with me it's like oh, I don't like a guitar sound I mean so I paid someone else to record it and effectively I paid them to say that's good enough or that's finished shit Oh shit! And it was. I mean, they also, you know, they they played on it. And they did they did a great job. But one of them, and I trusted them to, you know, to kind of go, tell me, tell me if I need to rewrite this, you know, because um, there was there's that thing that you just go. I mean, it was. I'll release this EP in February, and it'll be five years since the last one. Yeah. Five years. I mean, I know a lot's happened to me, breakup wise and moving houses and traveling the world, all that kind of stuff. But five years to add another six songs to my catalog. Yeah. And I know that, you know, it's been longer f- for you. I'm not t- trying to rub that in. Just saying, but uh, that's how easy it is. That's how easy it is to go like, so if you kind of go, well, this is my thing and we're going to record it then. Um, yeah. I, yeah I, so I, you know, I'm, clearly what I'm actually saying is I can't believe that last year went so quickly, but, you know, everyone says that. And, and, it, and then as you get older, oh, my God, they go even quicker. But Your own music I'm, always goes on the back burner. Yeah, it does. More than anything. It always has. Yeah. I, mm, I might talk about that more one other time. I might not. <laughs> um, and two other things I'm going to say. One is... War on Drugs is a band I found out about maybe three years ago. Mm-hmm. Every time I hear something new of them, I like it. And I don't necessarily recognise that it's them. And then I find out it's them. It's like, fuck, of course it is. I really like them. Cool. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Heard of them. I haven't, I haven't heard them. Um, really Bi- cool. Uh, Biffy Clearer is exactly the same for me. Ah, yeah, okay. Like... Yeah, every, yeah, every I time I hear something like, what is this? It's phenomenal. Yeah. And then I don't, like, I find out what it is and I don't pursue it much further. But I've never heard a piece of their music that I didn't go, this is really good. Yeah. And they're super live. Are they? Have you Holy seen crap. them? Yeah, I saw oh, them. Because they, wow. they used to tour with Muse. Oh, they, they probably okay. still do. I can't believe um, we didn't go the, the other week. <laughs> On our night off, we're like, I've got one night off this week and there's still tickets available. I'm yeah, staying home. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Europe are touring this year. Mm, okay. On a Saturday night in Melbourne. Are they? Yeah. I probably wouldn't have gone anyway. I never really cared about them. Uh, their last couple of records have been Yeah, you amazing. have said that. Europe are the, the final countdown. Yeah, and guys, I'm not, but look, they've done so much since I'm then. Not been, I'm not a, a huge fan. But I don't even know who's I know in the band they are. It's the same lot. But, they've, they've, but since what? Because oh, didn't John Norum no, leave, he's come back? back in the band yeah, for, right. for ages. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. But they yeah. Oh, Speaking of, we are going to finish up. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm going to, two things. Yes. Right, because it was two things, yes. and then we did one of them, yes. but then another one happened. Yes. Right. So, with the fact that I'm now a Spotify guy, yeah. and the just the not being decisive about what it is that I want to listen to, yes. I find that music is just kind of washing over me now. Yes. And I think I'm becoming like everyone else, that music's less important to me. Right. In the sense that I'm not choosing what I listen to. Oh. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that's coming at me, like listening to the radio, except that's why I don't listen to the radio, because yeah. I don't get to choose what I'm listening to. Yes. 
which is exactly the same thing as Spotify, except not interspersed by fucking inane DJs. Yeah, so Spotify's fine. Yeah, so yeah. I've found heaps of new music. Yeah. But I find one song because Spotify gives me songs that sound like... Oh, it does have a... If you've got it on the computer, it does have a thing where it's got related artists. Yes. So you don't have to go through a pl- playlist. You can just yeah, yeah, suggest yeah. and you can listen to all their stuff. I yeah, found yeah. a guy, John Fulbright, um, American guy, like amazing songwriter, great voice, but you know, in that in that vein of doesn't doesn't write first draft lyrics, like right. writes like sounds like a lot of work's gone in to to making simple stuff sound beautiful. Yeah, okay. And cared for, and cared for you know, in the oh. right. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't Do you know, know a country it. artist named David Nail? No. Mm. Mm. Came across my desk yesterday. Last thing. <laughs> Sorry, I keep rolling. I keep wanting to talk. Yeah, a last thing. I haven't um, spoken to you much this year. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian Vandenberg. Yeah, White Snake. Yeah. Yeah. So Mitch Lafon, this yeah. journalist, every day, sometimes more than once a day. We'll do a... Oh, this guy or this guy post? Yes. I hate them. So do I. They're awful. They're dumb. Uh, God bless him. And well, all they, they he's clickbait. generating content. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that, great. That's, that's what yeah, he's doing. I like the conversations. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, and, and I click yeah. through to see what people are saying. I'm yeah. interested in that. But the the this or that, this guitarist or that guitarist, yeah. this band is... Yeah, Eddie or Slash. There was one last yeah. week. It was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it was a guitarist one and Adrian Vandenberg yeah. said... Oh, it was CeCe DeVille yeah. or Tracy Guns. Yeah. Adrian Vandenberg, world-class guitarist, talking about two other... Chimed in? Yes. Neither. Nice guys, but don't let either of them pick up a guitar. Jerk. What a motherfucker. What a jerk. Isn't that a horrible thing to say oh, about now, your... Which he, I was going to say about your peers. compatriot, your yeah. peers. Yeah. He clearly doesn't regard them as peers. I mean, no. that's the whole point, but... What a jerk! Which is which is really funny because I I would argue and win every time that both of those guitar players are far more influential than Adrian Vandenberg. Influential, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, whether this is a good thing or not, I mean, at people you can hold your own opinion. But I play guitar because of CC Deville. Yeah, right. If it had not have been for CC Deville, yeah. I would have never played guitar. <laughs> I love that story. Just like what I mean, he just. There's never, there's never been a guy. He's just slightly ahead of Eddie Van Halen. Look like they had so much fun playing guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and something to believe in that solo is incredible. I think, I think yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's done some great stuff. You take the high road. <laughs> it's a good song. <laughs> it's a good song. <laughs> they got some, well, that's the other thing. I would also argue that I reckon. Yeah, I go on. CC Deville probably contributed some better songs than Adrian Vandenberg did. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, he'll never see this, hear this, whatever. No, I'd like him I to. I don't though. care either. Whatever. Don't pick on CC Deville. Don't pick on either of them. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Dumb. It has that thing. I just went straight for the underdogs. Like, he's gone for those two guys. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck you, mister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember the stories back in the day when he didn't play on that. Was it the 1987 album that he didn't play on? Because Vi, well, Vi wouldn't let him. Or like that. Oh, because, you know, he'd hurt his arm, broken his arm or something. So they called Steve Vai? Yeah, it was all yeah. rubbish. They just wanted... David Coverdale just wanted Steve Vai to play on that album. And Adrian Vandenberg got... Slip of the tongue. Slip of the tongue. Yeah. And Vandenberg got subbed out. So fuck you. Fair enough, too. The guitar playing on that album is just out of control. I don't know, by the way, if that's true. <laughs> but I remember that being yeah. the story back in the day. I know. I, especially now, I choose to believe it. Sure. Screw you, Vandenberg. Yeah. You have Not cool... Sam, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> I played with him on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, he did this version of Message in a Bottle. And I, I, there were, I was sitting next to him and I was like, I, I couldn't play. It was that good. I yeah, was right. Just, like, there was... It was that good. I was just wow. There's just something about the energy. Just you know, when, you know when Sam kind of gets into something, he's playing something, and he's just he's like so into that, so inside that song. Mm. He just like I was a couple of times just forgot that I was playing guitar. I was like just in his presence. It was such a great yeah, feeling. right. Yeah, it was really cool because it wasn't like you know those kind of gigs where you have to be quiet in the corner. We were loud, and it was a gig. Like it was yeah. ball tearing gig, 
and yeah, he was so was someone. <laughs> well, I know it's really funny. Is someone requested it, and she was from overseas somewhere, um, European, and she's like, "Message a bottle." And I said, "Do you know Jeannie in a bottle?" <laughs> 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 and he like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so he knew exactly what she actually asked for. But I've said Junior Bottle. Like, actually, how about you play Message Bottle and I'll do the Christian Aguilera song, which I love. I think it's a great song. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I've never ever been able to listen to it without laughing again since my sister like changed the lyric. Oh no. <laughs> I won't say it. It's rude. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because you know how she says, c- c- "Come on and let me out." Yes. Yeah, yeah. My sister changed the lyric, but it was like made me laugh a lot. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back again with another podcast soon. <laughs> c- c- come on in. Okay. So, <laughs> goodbye. Um, I love doing this with you. It's great fun. It is. Yeah. 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 It is. So, we got Wednesday. Th- we'll record again on Saturday. Uh, Anglers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Vanglers. On location at the Vanglers. <laughs> Worst logo ever. Worst logo ever. Good venue. Fun place. Like it. You should come to Anglers on Saturday. And. Yeah. Come to Anglers on Saturday. Thursday. Right? And if you come at two o'clock, you can be in the live studio audience of the podcast. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants to, we'll do it at two o'clock and we'll meet you and you can come up and we'll include you in the yeah. podcast. What a nice idea. Yeah. Sorry. I've decided that, but... No, um, no, no, no. I'm like, man, I'm up for anything. You know that. <laughs> well, except for telling your parents you have a bike. Goodbye. <laughs> Go and turn the thing off. See ya. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Beer. Oh. Ah, oh, no. I broke it. I'll tell you now, it's 13.